You might already know that using light correctly is the basis for stunning photography. But do you know how to control your camera to take full advantage of the light and get outstanding photos? My name is Mark Hemmings, and I'm an internationally recognized photographer and photography instructor. And in this video, I'll share with you three essential camera controls for using light in your photography. I'll show you exactly which settings I used to get my example photos and how to select these settings. By the end of this video, you'll be confident you can control your camera to get the perfect light for your own photographs. I would like to share with you an amazing technique for taking really cool pictures at night or at dusk when it's getting pretty dark out. It's called light trails and it's a result of having a long exposure. Now what we're going to do is make use of the light coming from the headlights of cars, of trucks and uh, motorcycles going under this bridge. It's going to be a really cool effect because what's going to happen is the camera is going to have a very long shutter speed which makes the light very blurry. Now we won't see the vehicles because of the long exposure but we will see the light. Let me show you first what we need to do in our camera. I'd like you to switch to aperture priority. Also, I'd like to make sure that you're at your lowest ISO possible. That would be ISO 100 or in some cameras, ISO 200. Also, I want to make sure that your aperture's f-stop is at the highest number possible. For example, maybe your lens is f22 for its highest or maybe f16 or even f32. Whatever the highest f-stop number is for your aperture, place it on that. Okay, the next thing, make sure you have a tripod. It's critical. This won't work without a tripod. You could possibly rest your camera on a solid surface. However, a tripod has a little bit more flexibility, so that's what I suggest. Now, when you're ready to take the picture, make sure you've composed it the way you wanted it and you're ready to go. Now, you don't need to worry about camera shake. You don't need to have a 10 second or three second timer because the picture's so long, even if you do shake the camera just a little bit, the exposure could be uh, as much as one or two minutes long. So be prepared for a long wait. Okay, let's do a test run. I see some cars coming down now, so I'm gonna take the picture. And now, I'm just going to wait. Okay, it was a great success. Take a look at this picture. We have really great exposure all around. The street is exposed perfectly. We have lovely light on the sides, but what we have are streaks of light. You can't see the cars, only the light. It's a great success. Just remember, you don't have to rely on headlights. I could go on the other side of this bridge and get the red tail lights, which could even be cooler. Don't forget, anything that is moving that has bright light, you can use this technique on it will radically enhance your photography. Have fun. Exposure compensation is an extremely useful camera feature that's gonna let you control the brightness or darkness of your photos. What this allows you to do is make your photos brighter than normal for a cheerful appearance or darker for a more moody, atmospheric appearance. And it's really simple to do. It's as easy as pressing a plus button for the camera to increase brightness and a minus button to make your photo darker. The first step is to find a scene that the camera thinks looks good, but you feel is either too bright or too dark. Now take a look at this test shot. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I feel this photo is too dark for my artistic purposes, so I'm gonna adjust my brightness level using exposure compensation. I'm gonna go from auto mode to program mode, represented by the letter P. If you use a Canon camera, most models require you to press the Q button on the back to access exposure compensation. If you use a Nikon or any other camera maker model, you should see a little plus minus icon located on the top of the camera or on the back. By pressing these buttons to access exposure compensation, you can now adjust the plus and minus scale by using one of your finger dials or the rear scroll dial, depending on your camera model. You should be able to see a scale that has a 3, 2, 1, 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3. By default, your camera is probably set to 0. Now, I'd like you to change from the default 0 setting down to minus 1, and then take the same photo. Okay, 
Here we go. Go ahead. Okay, as you can see, the photo is darker than the original that I took. Now I will get you to switch to the plus one setting. And again, take the shot. Okay, go ahead. Okay, and as expected, it's a brighter photo. Because I didn't like the way that the camera decided my exposure first, when I review all three shots, I really like the brighter photo that was taken at plus one. To sum up, use exposure compensation when you either want a brighter or darker photo than what the camera thinks is best. Have you ever been in the situation where you take a look at your picture and you realize that the color is totally off? In fact, it was very different from the way you saw it with your own eyes. Well, this is a common problem and it can be completely eradicated by altering something called white balance. Now, white balance is a way for you to tell your camera exactly what colors you want in your pictures. And all cameras have at least the basic ability to adjust white balance. I like to go through a few different options with you, plus a few little secrets that I have to give you excellent control over color in your pictures. Okay, so the first white balance I wanna show you is cloudy. Let's take a look at this picture that I have that I took in Thailand. As you can see, there's no direct sunlight. It was really nice overcast light. So I chose the cloudy white balance setting to keep the warmth or the yellow tones in. Because if I didn't use cloudy, the picture would have been a little bit bluish, which I don't like. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now, do you see how this picture has a lot of shade? There's uh, certainly no light on the walkway and there's a lot of shade underneath the tree and in the buildings. By using the shade white balance, I was able to maintain a really warm look. Otherwise, the picture would have been too bluish, which again, doesn't look really good for photos. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you're photographing with fluorescent light, the light is probably going to be green. That's right, you're gonna get green light on people's faces and it's just not gonna look good. If you switch to fluorescent mode, you're gonna have a nice, clean, white look to everything that's being illuminated by those bulbs. It's very effective. As for this example photo that I took in Tokyo, this woman's face was all green. In fact, all of the, the people inside the diner, they were all green as well. With a simple switch to fluorescent, everything was made perfect. Now, the next one is light bulb, also called incandescent. This is really good for whenever you're taking pictures inside a house that's illuminated by normal household light bulbs. You may have noticed in the past that you photograph inside your house and everything is really orange looking. Well, if you switch to the light bulb or incandescent mode, you're gonna have much more accurate colors in your pictures. Also, I have a really cool trick for you. You can actually use the light bulb setting to fake nighttime scenes. Take a look at this picture that I took in Korea. It was in the bright, hot noonday sun. However, I was able to make it look like moonlit nighttime scenes easily by going to the light bulb setting and underexposing the picture. That means making it dark. This is a trick called day for night. It's used commonly in the movie industry and it's really effective for giving you even more ability to create artistic shots in the worst lighting possible, which is usually around noontime. Okay, now the next one i like to show you is a situation when you're in cities, you may encounter what we call vapor lamps. And these are lights that create ugly yellow, orange, and sometimes green light that's very hard to control. This is where auto white balance is probably the best. Now, I'm known as someone who wants to get people off of the auto mode. However, there are certain times when auto white balance is the best. Let me give you another example. This next picture is a European streetscape. Can you see all the different types of lights? We have LED lights, we have green light, we have orange light, plus various vapor lights that we can't see coming from behind my camera. It's almost a recipe for disaster. This is where auto white balance is certainly the best choice because you don't really have the ability at all times to accurately judge what types of lights are in a certain situation, especially when you're in a hurry. This is where auto white balance is very effective. Okay, to summarize, alter white balance to give yourself ultimate control over the color tones of your pictures. Now, keep in mind that you sometimes need to use auto white balance if you have mixed lighting. 
However, I would encourage you to get off the auto mode and really understand what these modes can do for your photography. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I hope that you got a lot of value out of it. Now there's so much more I'd like to tell you about digital photography. And while I didn't hold anything back, there's only so much I could share with you in a short video like this. And that's why I've recorded an entire video course about taking incredible photos with your digital camera and finally taking your camera off of the auto mode. So if you'd like to find out more about my digital photography course, you'll find more information right under this video. So take a look at my full digital photography course and I hope to see you there.